So here we have a problem that combines constant velocity with acceleration. It says, determine the stopping distances for an automobile with a starting speed of 40, human reaction time of one second, so one second goes by before you hit the brakes, and then you have a negative acceleration. You slow down the car at four meters per second per second, um, and then it has you rework the problem again if you slow it down twice as fast. I'm not going to work part B because it's identical. You just toss in a different number. So, but the first part of this problem, you're just going at a steady speed of 40 meters per second, which means before you hit the brakes, we need to know how far you traveled. Piece of cake. Velocity is 40. The time is 1. How far did you go? Should be pretty easy to you at this point. You went 40 meters, right? Because you're going 40 meters per second for one second. So you traveled 40 meters at the beginning part before you even hit the brakes. So we just send that down for the final answer. But now the tricky part, we need to calculate how far you traveled while you were braking. So we've got acceleration is minus four. We don't know the distance. They didn't tell us the time either, but we do know your starting and ending velocities. You started at 40 meters per second, and you obviously finished at zero. Again, they didn't really tell you that your final speed was zero. You had to kind of read between the lines. It's the stopping distance, so hidden in that is the information that you stopped. So your final velocity is zero. So make sure you read carefully to dig all the information you can out of a problem. Don't jump into the math before you have all the info. Anyway, just one way you could have solved it is since we don't have time, this is a sweet formula for when they didn't give you time because there's no T's in here. Final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared equals 2A delta X. And we've got all those values. We just toss them in. So this turns into zero, right? Final velocity squared. Um, remember that the negative sign sticks around because... Some of you might be thinking, okay, well, negative 40 squared, why is this value still negative? That negative happens like, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the exponent hits it before the negative. So keep in mind that that negative lingers there. Don't forget that it's there because that was a minus sign. It belonged to this thing as a whole. It's almost like there's invisible parentheses around it. So you get negative 1600, 2 times negative 4 gives you the negative 8 times delta x, and then you just divide it. Pretty easy. You get delta x is 200. It took you 200 meters during the phase when you were braking to stop. So for the total distance that it took you to stop, it's pretty easy. You just do 40 plus 200. So, whoops, 200. So it took you 240 meters to stop. Now, something that i like you to think about, maybe you remember this from the last video, the average velocity trick. Ah, okay. So, first of all, for the time, you could calculate if you wanted to, right? If you started at 40 and you're slowing down by 4 every second, it took you 10 seconds to come to a stop. So hopefully you can just bust that out in your head, that it would take 10 seconds to stop, right? If every 1 second you get 4 slower, then it would take you 10 of those seconds to get to 0 speed. Okay. But what was your average speed? What was your V bar? Well, you started out at 40 and you finished at zero. Do you know what it is? Average speed would be 20 if you start at 40 and you finish at zero. So V bar is 20 and T is 10 and you get the same thing that we had before. Right? Average velocity times the time gives you the exact same stopping distance, but without this little mathematical gymnastics. Notice how that we just avoided these ugly exponents, all the negative numbers. We kept things nice and simple. This is a sweet trick if you can master it, and it would have gotten you to the exact same answer.